Is it possible to go too slowly during your zone two training sessions? And should you base your training zones on your maximal aerobic power results? These are some of the questions I'm gonna tackle in this video. I recently got an email from one of the subscribers of the channel, Florence, and I highlighted the main parts of her question here. Uh, she, as she says that, uh, you say that in zone two, you can't train too low, but that you can easily go too high. The graphs on the Moxie monitor seem to indicate the opposite. There's an active recovery zone below uh, fundamental endurance or zone two. Uh, then she says that their argument seems to me to have some weight. Active recovery is when there's more oxygen than necessary. The curve rises. Zone two training is when things stay balanced, maximum oxygenation, and incidentally, there's a lower plateau for functional endurance, and high intensity is when the curve collapses. So we'll go over those uh, terms and what uh, the MOXIE exactly shows just after. And then she says, I don't have a MOXIE monitor, but when you know your maximal aerobic power, you can establish proportions with a case study from MOXIE, uh, whose map wa uh, seems to be around 220 watts. So I base my zones on their model and it corresponds perfectly to my sensations. In short, it's possible to train too low and the oxygenation criterion seems correct to me uh, to be able to say that. So first of all, thanks Florence for sharing your uh, experience. And if your current zones match your sensation and your rating of perceived exertion, your RPE, then you're probably training in the right uh, areas and the right intensities. But I wanted to come back on some of the things that Florence said, uh, mainly regarding, can you train too slow or too easily in zone two? Is there such a thing as too low? Uh, and also answer the question about the zones but first and to understand the context of this question more broadly we're going to look at the moxie monitor together see how it works and what the measurement of the moxie actually tells us so the moxie monitor uses the nears technology which is which stands for near infrared spectroscopy essentially it shines a light inside the muscle and it measures inside the capillaries and it's going to measure the hemoglobin and the myoglobin not the quantity of them but essentially out of 100 myoglobin slash hemoglobin which are the two transport molecules uh in for for oxygen inside the inside the body uh hemoglobin inside the blood and myoglobin inside the muscle out of 100 of those uh, transport molecules how many are saturated with oxygen and how many are not saturated with oxygen uh so it just gives you a percentage out of 100 uh and based on that we can determine different training intensities now the graphs i'm going to show you are based on uh, protocol 41 which is simply the the format uh, that I that I use in my step tests. Uh, it's composed of four minutes of steady work, one minute of passive rest, and then we increase and we try to do about 10 stages uh, across the test. And through that, we're going to look at low intensity, medium intensity, and high intensity. So we're going to be able to find those first and second thresholds and determine somebody's profile and somebody's training zones. Now, if we look at what uh, a lactate curve would look like on such a test, we see here for uh, my friend and colleague David, uh, a good runner, uh, that at low intensity, lactate is going to stay nice and flat. So here between 10 and 13 kilometers per hour, lactate stays pretty steady, even though we're increasing the output in kilometers per hour on each stage. Then we have a phase where lactate goes up progressively here between 13 and 16, 16 and a half. And then from 17 onwards, we see that lactate go up much, much faster. Now, if we were to look at what the MOXIE gives us for information on such a test, uh, what's interesting is that we can see two different trends. And at the beginning, when I started doing those tests multiple years ago, I was confused as to why we saw those two different trends uh, on the exact same test and sometimes on the same person, but simply with the MOXIE placed on a different muscle and sometimes from one person to the next. So we see those two different trends, uh, but again, it's the same test and we're going from low to medium to high intensity in both of those cases. But despite that, we have a different trend. So what's going on? Uh, on the left, we have a more linear profile. So it's kind of a flat down flat. And then on the right, we have a more uh, parabolic or hyperbolic, uh, parabolic, I guess is the right term, profile up, flat, and then down, which is uh, what was uh, what Florence was mentioning in her email. And again, for the longest time, I was confused about this, but thanks to my friend, uh, Jem, who does a tremendous amount of work in the area. This is one of his graphs here where he measured uh, on a slightly different format of test, but it was, I believe it was five, one, five minutes on one minute off uh, with some pretty high level cyclists. 
And he had also measured uh, the skin fold of those athletes uh, before he did the test. And what he knows, noticed is that the SMO2 trend varied uh, according to the uh, skin fold. So the adipose tissue thickness, or I guess skin fold would be a proxy for adipose tissue thickness. And uh, what uh, we figured out uh, and what Jem figured out is that depending on the adipose tissue thickness or the skin fold in that case, the uh, light signal from the moxie doesn't travel down to the same uh, penetration depth inside the muscle. And it seems like there's different uh, oxygen kinetics uh, at the surface of a muscle or deeper down inside a muscle. We could, uh, I believe that it's uh, correct if I say that deeper inside the muscle, there's a higher uh, density of mitochondria and potentially capillaries as well, which means that it's easier to use oxygen uh, deeper inside the muscle than it is closer to the surface. And so if we measure the muscle more sup superficially, uh, we're gonna see the red-like uh, trend here, so up, uh, flat down. And if we measure deeper uh, inside the muscle, so for example, if somebody's lean, has very low adipose tissue thickness, we're gonna see the flat down and flat trend. And that's something that I see now in my testing. And we have to take that into consideration when determining our profile and how we're gonna use the MOXIE. And remember that here we're looking at uh, not zones, not training zones out of a five zone model, but we're looking at intensity domains, which can be determined uh, with physiological measurements, whether it's lactate, whether it's the moxie. So we're looking at the low, the medium, and the high intensity, which is in technical terms, the moderate domain, the heavy domain, and the severe domain. So if we look at those here, uh, now we have those three different intensity levels or intensity domains, low, medium, and high. Uh, and if we look at training zones, a five zone model, uh, we would superimpose them something like this. Some people put zone four above the second threshold, which I don't necessarily agree with because in my book, threshold training is uh, some, it looks more like tempo training than it does like high intensity training in most cases. And yes, you, you can uh, run a Norwegian threshold session where you're doing short uh, threshold intervals and mechanically you're at high intensity, but physiologically, if you measure lactate and you control your lactate levels, uh, you will be at medium intensity. Uh, so on, on that little uh, aside, uh, I would consider zone two to be in the low intensity portion of this distribution. Uh, and I think Florence was sometimes referring to zone two as the medium intensity domain in the in the message in her email. Uh, so for me, when I say zone two training, it's really low intensity training. Uh, and in that case, whether you have an up flat down trend or a flat down flat trend, well, you should determine that for yourself with a moxie first before you say, oh, uh, my trend is flat, so I'm at medium intensity. Because obviously, as you can see here, you can have a flat trend, but if you don't have the full spectrum to look at and to determine what your profile is with your moxie on that muscle that you just measured, uh, if I say, oh, my trend is flat, well, it could be low intensity, it could be medium intensity with the higher trend, it could be high intensity with the lower trend as well. Uh, obviously, the RPE is going to tell you exactly where you are, but you can't just look at a trend. You have to understand the whole uh, intensity spectrum in order to do this. And so if I were to answer that first question, can you train too low in zone two? My argument would be that no, you cannot train too easily in zone two because there's technically no difference between zone one and zone two, at least not from a physiological standpoint. You can't break those two zones apart with any measurement. There's no heart rate inflection point. There's there's no lactate inflection point. Uh, and for me, it's really just going to depend on somebody's profile. Now, obviously, whether you train really close to your first threshold or really far away from it is going to depend on your level and the amount of volume that you're doing. I'll give you two very simple examples. Let's say that your first threshold on the bike is at 150 watts. Uh, so in that case, I would do most zone two sessions between 120 and 140 watts. But now if you're a professional cyclist with a first threshold at 300 watts, well, you might not want to not want to do 15 hours a week at 280 watts. So you might pull that way back down to 240, 260. It's still low intensity, but because it's a little bit lower than the 280, you're going to be able to do a lot more volume of it. So typically I would say that uh, the higher your level, the farther away from your first threshold you're going to train uh, simply because 
uh, that way you can do more work and you can limit the amount of fatigue that you're accumulating. So that would be my first uh, takeaway in this video. You cannot train too low, uh, but the lower you go, the more volume you can do. And that might be beneficial depending on where you currently are uh, in your training development. Now for the second big question, we've looked at the Moxie trends and how uh, they're going to look depending on what intensity you're at. Can you actually determine your training zones based on your maximal aerobic power, which would be the results of a step test that you would do in that case on the bike, which is also a, a test that you can do uh, running. We would call that mass, maximum aerobic speed. And the argument that Florence puts in her email is that uh, you can look at the trends, look at the percentages and figure out your zones. She did it. I'm glad that it worked for her. Uh, but I have uh, a bit more uh, re reservation regarding this uh, and I'll show you exactly why. So here I gave you two very simple examples of uh uh, different profiles that you can find in different athletes and both of those athletes have a maximum aerobic power of 250 watts but what you're going to see on the left is a more powerful profile higher proportion of fast switch fibers <clears throat> and less endurance development and we're going to see that second threshold sitting at around 190 watts and that first threshold sitting at around 140 watts if you look at the endurance profile on the right hand side here we're going to also have a 250 uh, watt maximum aerobic power but in that case, threshold two is at 220 watts and threshold one is at 170 watts. So if we were to take the same numbers, the same percentages of maximal aerobic power for both athletes, well, if I say uh, the endurance athlete needs to do his zone two at 150, 160 watts. Well, if I give that same prescription to the powerful athlete, uh, he's going to be out of his zone two. He's already in zone three, right? Uh, same with threshold. I might uh, get the endurance uh, person, the endurance uh, profile here to work at 205, 210 watts uh, tops at threshold, maybe 200 watts to be conservative. Um, if I give 200 watts to the powerful profile, well, they're already in the high intensity domain, right? They're already past their threshold technically. And conversely, if I were to prescribe high intensity training for the powerful profile, we could see that their high uh, intensity capacity, work capacity at high intensity is much larger than the endurance profile. So they'll be able to either go harder or do more intervals at a, an equivalent power, whereas the endurance profile is not uh, built uh, for that type of work and won't be able to tolerate as much volume or uh, push up the same same reps uh, or the same intensities as the, the powerful profile. So I think we need to be careful with generalizing and just taking fixed percentages, just like some people say we should take 70% of max heart rate for zone two. Well, again, it's going to depend. For some, it's 70. For some, it's 75. For others, it's 55. So we have to take that variation into consideration. Obviously, it's going to depend on uh, your uh, muscle type Typology, so how much type 1 and type 2 fibers you have. Uh, it's going to depend <clears throat> on your history or your sports history. So what have you practiced throughout your life? What are you practicing now? All those things will influence that profile, but we have to consider those differences if we want to be more uh, coherent in our interpretation. And we can take the same analysis, but on a slightly different visual here. If we take critical power as the baseline for both here, uh, which is the 100% power, uh, critical power being an equivalent for the second threshold, if we want to simplify things. And you could see that the powerful profile has a much more kind of extended profile. If we take the, the starting point of that critical power, threshold one is going to be much lower uh, at a lower percentage of critical power. But then five minute power, three minute power, 12 minute power are going to be at higher percentages of that critical power compared to the endurance profile. You can see it's more condensed around that second threshold. Uh, threshold one is much higher compared to the powerful profile. And then 12 minute power, five minute power, three minute power are much lower uh, simply because of that lower high intensity work capacity that we saw in the previous visual. So if we were to sum up the three main points of this video, first, I would argue that no, you cannot go too low in your low intensity training. Uh, the more volume you do and the higher your level, the lower relative to your first threshold you're going to want to be. Obviously, if you're just starting out and you're just doing a couple hours of low intensity in the week, it's not going to kill you to be close to your first threshold, 
even on your first threshold, I would argue. Uh, but you have to consider those nuances depending on the level and know that you cannot train too low uh, at low intensity. The second one regarding the Moxie trends is make sure you understand what your trends are for what you're measuring on you with the Moxie so you can determine the right uh, zones or the right intensities for you to train at. And thirdly, I would use some precautions if you're trying to just find your training zones based on a single maximal number like a maximum aerobic power or maximum aerobic speed for that matter the the the, the parallel is the same uh, and i would really consider your individual profile when it comes to endurance training and no you don't need a perfect test but you should have some ballpark numbers that you can work with so that you can plan your training intensities intelligently and relative to your current capacity. If you want to learn a bit more about this, I created a free video guide for you about endurance. You can find it in the uh, link below. And you'll also find more information about RPE and how you can use this in your training and even to test yourself uh, as we saw earlier with the Moxie and with the lactate. But you can actually do this with RPE. It's actually valid Dated. It's really interesting. So I invite you to click on the link and go further. Thanks for watching this video. I'll see you in the next one.